Hi, it's Nick Astor with TriplePundit.com. We are at Sustainable Brands 2012 in San Diego, California. I'm here with Cynthia Figgy. She is the COO and co-founder of CSR Hub. And now our readers have been following along with CSR Hub for quite some time, but for those who might not be familiar, give us the, in a nutshell, what is CSR Hub all about? Thanks, Nick. It's great to be here and, and speaking with you. Um, CSR Hub is now um, a, the largest uh, aggregation of sustainability ratings and information uh, in the world. We aggregate uh, over 150 sources of sustainability data and we basically give a rating on the performance of 5,000 publicly traded companies. Excellent. So one of the themes of the conference here has been driving driving sustainability into consciousness, basically, um, and specifically the, the consumer's consciousness. Um, I guess before we get down to that, tell us some of the things that people are using your data to do. Right. I think um, one of the things that our goal was to really take the data that's out there, um, and particularly uh, some of the really expensive data that has been uh, developed by analysts for investors, and really make um, all these rich sources of data from public interest groups, from the government, from analysts, available to consumers and to everyone. Um, so that's, that's been a driving force. And we, we know that the tool is being used as a benchmark, um, a way to compare the performance of companies and, in, in, and, and make them comparable. Um, we also know that it's a stakeholder analysis tool because a lot of people are interested in special issues and how uh, a company might be um, performing. Are they uh, doing business in Burma? Are they, a, are they involved in fracking? Um, how are they uh, in terms of partner benefits? Uh, do they do animal testing? And so we have been uh, unearthing really great sources of information on special issues and we know that people are using it that way. So our audience tends to be business people, professionals, uh, lots of students doing research, graduate students and bloggers and activists. So fantastic. So are, um, are consumers paying attention? Are positive ratings yielding uh, consumers to go out and support that company and vice versa for companies that might not be doing so well? Yeah, I think it's it's just um, at this at this point our our data is, is you know our purpose is providing that data to lead to insight and decision making. Uh, we haven't closed the loop, so we don't know quite how uh, folks are are acting based upon the information that they're gathering. Uh, one thing that uh, I do think is happening is that increasingly uh, companies are paying attention to ratings and employees are paying attention to how their company is performing and how it's perceived. Mm -hmm. Now that makes a lot of sense. If I were a company, I'd be concerned if I got a low rating and I'd yeah. probably tell all my employees, look at, w look at what, what your hard work has accomplished uh, in terms of getting a high rating. Yeah. Um, do you have any uh, uh, stories of that kind of thing happening? You know, have, have companies been in touch with you and, and said that yes, we're actually taking action on something uh, as, a, as a result of some of the work that you and folks like you have been doing? Well, I think um, sometimes companies are just not uh, recognized for some of the good work that they're, they're doing and sometimes I think companies that have somewhat of a halo effect because they might be a very uh, great product company or they have some very good customer service. Um, they're kind of surfing on um, the, the perception that they're doing well in sustainability. And so I think some of the feedback that we've gotten is that there's a little bit of surprise in both, both ways, mm -hmm. that some companies have a long way to go uh, to get their sustainability performance to really match the, the, the company's brand. Uh, so to speak, and I think we know who some of those companies are. Um, but that kind of disconnect, I think, is upsetting uh, for employees because uh, one of the things that I've known working in this field for 15 years is that, um, and seeing the rise of CSR reports, is that one of the great audiences for, for those reports uh, are employees themselves. How, 
do, do you know the percentage, how many uh, of the folks that actually sit down and read the CSR report, how many, what percentage of that are actually people who work for the company? Yeah, um, I, I think there was a report uh, by Ernst & Young that looked at, uh, canvassed uh, several thousands of, of um, professionals in the field, and I believe, and I'm sorry I don't have the precise mm -hmm. uh, number, but I think it's the the second highest percentage of folks that are kind of consume, consuming employees are um, just a really important use use group. Of course, there's an emerging group of customers, mm -hmm. and um, and and other stakeholders, um, investors, and and others, but. Um, but employees, I think, are in a lot of ways uh, really driving, uh, driving this. And so, to a certain extent, you have that uh, ability to have a, uh, a double play. Uh, employees are consumers, and employees are business people that are driving the performance of their companies. Fantastic. Readers of the site uh, will be happy to know that uh, we're in the process of building a landing page for all of the Fortune 500 companies and more. And on each of those landing pages, in addition to news, we have added the CSR Hub widget so you can actually uh, see the uh, current rating of those companies uh, as you check out news about them. That's wonderful. Thanks yeah. so much. And thank you for your time, Cynthia. Thank you.